E is for E waste by Ellen Banda Arco. So in this, we are going to understand what is E waste. So a very interesting uh, kind of a short story. Saku, even you can write an assignment about the ways to save the planet. That's what Mr. North, our class teacher, said to me as he handed out the homework assignment to the class. Imagine that. He said, Saku, even you, which suggested that even a dimwit like me can write an assignment on ways to save a planet. Now, the whole class knows Mr. North and his smart mouth. We know, he says, things to provoke us to provide him, wrong, prove him wrong. So, I really shouldn't have minded what he said. But I did. You see, Mr. North said in front of Tasha, she's a new girl in my class with dimpled cheeks and busy eyebrows. Ever since she walked into a classroom and Mr. North introduced her to us, Tasha's face has stuck in my mind. Her face has stuck in my head like the pink bubble gum sticks in the pocket of my school trousers. Twice I tried to speak to Tasha, but both times my words got lost somewhere between my head and my mouth. So I ended up gaping at her like a fish. And when I gaped at her, she looked at me as if I was indeed a dimwit. So that is why I was determined to write the best assignment in my class. I had to show Tasha how clever I really was. So here we find a character is Saku Sagu. And, um, and uh, there is another character called Tasha. So the teacher feels that uh, Saku is, is, a, is a dumb fellow, who is an idiot who, or who is not uh, good for anything. But he feels that even he can write an article or an assignment on the topic E of, of uh, uh, I mean, about uh, how to ways to save the planet. So he, even Saku, uh, a nimwit can write an article about how to save the planet. So Saku wants, uh, uh, actually Mr. Nor the, uh, is trying to convince or say that certain things to him. Uh, but, uh, uh, but the real thing is that um, he wants to kind of please Tasha. Because Tasha is a beautiful girl. And he wants to show off before her that he is capable of doing things. So he wants to actually do something good. Okay, so twice he had tried to speak to Tasha, but both times my words got lost somewhere between my head and my mouth. So I ended up gaping at her like a fish. So he failed to talk to Tasha, but now he has got a good chance. So when I got home from school, I sat in the shade of an avocado tree that stands right next to our house. It stands so close to our house that sometimes I can pick an avocado Pia, by stretching my arms out through the dining room window. Imagine that cool, isn't it? Being able to pick a fruit from a tree while standing inside the house. Ma doesn't think it's cool. She says the tree is too close to the house and one day its big roots will lift our house out of the ground. Either that or the tree will fall and smash our house flat to the ground. Dad says mom worries too much. He says it's such a harmless tree. So this is about a beautiful avocado tree. So the avocado tree is quite near the house. So he can stand inside the house and pick an avocado from the tree. It's very close. But now what happens is that his mother is saying that the avocado tree has to be cut down because it is very dangerous. Its roots can enter the house. Its root can uplift the uh, ground and swell the ground and make the wall fall. So she's afraid. But uh, my father says it is okay because her, the mother worries too much. I know, Ma and Dad are both right. Mom worries too much and Dad says that avocado tree is harmless because he doesn't want the hassle of having to cut the tree down, which is what Ma has been trying to get him to do for years now. So mother wants the tree down, but Dad is not uh, willing because he, he can't bother about going and finding somebody to cut the tree down. So it is going to be a big trouble for him. So he's not willing to cut the tree down. So mother has been behind him. Come on, cut the tree. Anyway, I got home from school and sat under the tree with my book open on my lap and started thinking about the various ways to save our planet. Mr. North had said we could be as creative as possible in ISA. So anyway, I got home from school and sat under the tree with my book open on my lap started thinking about the various ways to save our planet. So how to save a planet? He sat under the 
avocado tree and started thinking so the tree itself is symbolic the tree itself is facing a great threat because it will be cut down any moment so mr north had said we could as be as creative as possible in isa so he is going to be very creative i started by writing a title ways to save a planet earth after the title i got a bit stuck so after writing the title he got stuck i know a lot about recycling and reusing to save the plants natural resources but i struggled to put my thoughts into words for example i know that the water we use to wash food can be recycled by using it for to water plants so there are different ways to save nature we can recycle we can recycle we can use the water that we waste it so lots of water we malayali is waste so we can use that water to actually water plant or do something else or the water we use to rinse clothes can be used to wash a car we can also save water by fixing leaking pipes which is very common everywhere leaking pipes from through which lots of water is lost and we can have save energy by switching off lights when it not in use taking our old shopping bag to grocer store instead of using new plastic bags also helps save the environment because plastic bag do not decompose naturally so the less we use the better so now we we are given lots of options to save nature it's not a big thing you can save it quite easily by just taking some cloth bag to the supermarket uh, recycling the water that you are using simple process can save nature by not throwing batteries on the ground not bursting tube lights on the ground all these things can save nature and i know for certain that chopping down the avocado tree is not good for the plant because trees make the oxygen that we breathe you see i do not know a lot about saving the planet as i ponder over how to write down the information in a way that made sense was imaginative and showed how clever i was the garage door rumbled off the ground and ma appeared from behind it Saku, which one of these box has my documents? With her hands on her hips, Ma frowned at the box stacked high on one side of the garage. Now the garage is not a place where they keep the car. Actually, this is the place that they keep the car. But here we find that Saku's father and mother they have dumped everything there. Now our garage is not really a garage because Dad has never parked his car inside it. So it is like a storeroom instead of a garage. It cannot be called a garage because the car is not inside the garage. If we did, the car would probably get lost, just like mass documents and all the other things we store in the garage and can never find. So if we keep the car inside the garage, the car will be lost because it is full of things. Now that was my first mistake. What I should have done at the moment was to keep my head bowed over my book. And Ma would have left me alone to do my homework, but I did. I got up and joined Ma in the garage. Across from the boxes on the other side of the garage stood our old fridge. Now look at the things that are there inside the garage. One old fridge. Then next to it, you now an older freezer. On top of the freezer sat Dad's old computer. My first tricycle, still bright but blue, but with only two wheels left. Lay. on the pile of old bicycles next to the land mower with a faulty motor look at the things that are there inside all have some defect and they are stored there they are all e waste never mind i'll ask your father ma said for me to answer her question she stormed past me to find dad which was just as well and had no idea where her documents were it was 5:30 so dad was sitting in front of the tv in his best and blue and white striped pajama trousers as everything when he comes home from work ma said did not wait for me to answer a question she stumped past me to find that which was just as well i had no idea where a document was so he, he she just left him and went to find the father because the father will be able to find the document <laughs> So, uh, so dad, she went after dad to find what is happening. It was five days. So dad was sitting in front of the TV in his best and blue white pajama trousers, as he does every day when he comes home from work. So he is taking rest. But now the mother is going to jump at him. I told you to label the box before you stored them, but you said you didn't need to. Ma said, leading dad to the garage. So now, come on, show me which box has my documents. 
everything is somewhere in here. Dad scratched his head as sign he was irritated. Sarku, where is your mother's box? He asked me as if I would know. Give the boy to do his homework. Ma snapped, pointing back to the chair where I had abandoned my book and pen. Come on, go. Let's go and do the homework. At that moment, I realized from Ma's tone that doing my homework outside was a big mistake. I sat back down and tried to look busy. I keep asking you to throw all this away. Ma said, poking at Dad's book. The broomstick she had picked off the floor. This place is full of rubbish. I keep telling you we can't just throw this electric stuff on the to a rubbish heap. Dad growled. He kept looking at his watch as if he spoke. He was check how much of the news he was missing. Some of his equip this equipment use of tough toxins and pollute the air. Dad said, Come on, now you can't throw all these things out because these will these will lead to. Uh, the soil being polluted, the air being polluted. So we can't just throw it out. Pollute the air, you drive a car, the use of black smoke. Ma said, she had been trying to convince dad to get rid of this car for years. Come on now, you, you, you have a car which is giving off black smoke, which has to be dumped, but you are still keeping to that car. How can you keep to that car and say that this is damaging, uh, this is creating pollution? If you car, you don't have a car, you don't have a car, you don't have a car. Now, Ma gave me an idea for my homework. Ma gave me an idea for my homework. I quickly scribbled reduce pollution to save the planet on the cover of my book. I could I would write the essay neatly in my book later. This is not waste that goes into the usual waste bin. This is e-waste and need to be disposed of an e-waste processing or recycling bins and dad. So dad said that this is not merely e-waste, but this is something else. So you have to actually deposit it in somewhere else, not here. I think he was going to say more, but Ma didn't give him a chance. He waste or whatever you call it. I want it out of this carriage. She held. E waste. Another interesting word. So what is e waste? What are the things that lead to e waste? Look around your house and you will find lots of things that give can be called e waste. Bulb, battery, your computer, your toys, your plastic covers, everything e is leads to e waste. E waste? Okay, Ma would interpret that. I, I thought of how clever I would look if I wrote about e-waste in my assignment. While dad's words were still fresh in my mind, I scribbled e-waste is waste made up of equipment such as fridges, computers and bicycles. I wasn't sure about bicycles, so I crossed it out. And you clear out e-waste should be disposed of an e-waste processing or recycling system to stop it polluting the air. So I should uh, do something. I should... Uh, I should uh, uh, focus on e-waste. E-waste, I should put it uh, like this, that e-waste should be, uh, should undergo a, a recycling process which will lead to the e-waste e coming out or the leading it to stop the, uh, po stop polluting the air. Meanwhile, as I was scribbling all over the cover of my book, the argument between Ma and Dad was heating up, shaking his dad said, you wouldn't understand any ways. Don't start your fancy terms. You should have labeled the box simply. Ma interrupted Dad again. I agree with Ma. Dad has a way of complicating everything. Ma, Ma says it's because he reads too many books. That's why I didn't tell him about my assignment or ask him more about English. I knew he'll bombard me with big words and give me the whole history of saving the environment. And I didn't need the whole encyclopedia. I just need enough to impress Tasha and prove Mr. North wrong. So I just wanted uh, two things that I wanted 
to impress Tasha and I wanted to uh, prove that Mr. North is wrong and I am not a fool. So if I ask dad, he will come up with lots of books and references and that will create a mess. So I cross my fingers that dad wouldn't give up on the R game and so that I can learn more about EVS. But before he could say any, uh, any more pandemonium broke out. Ma screamed, E, ah, ah, I screamed louder and jumped out of me. Black rat was darting back and forth between Ma's and dad's feet. As I landed on the chair, my feet plunged, plowed through the canvas seat and I topped over into the muddy edge. My legs got caught in the air. So I kicked it free and jumped up just as the dad disappeared up dad's pajama trousers. He gripped the rat just above his knee and stamped his feet like a crazy gumfoot dancer. Ma jumped up and down with her dad shouting, It is a rat, it is a rat. I know what it is, dad shouted back. And right at that moment, he whipped his trousers down his ankle and hoped out of them. He must have excused the rat really hard because it landed with a thud and zigzagged away from beneath the pyjama trousers. I tore after it to whack it with my book. At least I tried to whack the rat, but I kept missing. Ma also tried to get it with a broomstick. We got into another way and the rats scurried under the hedge into the neighbor's garden. So there was a rat and the rat ran between the two legs. Finally, it climbed up the pyjama. So the father had to remove his pyjama and crush it. But it, it escaped and they all tried different ways to get hold of the rat. But the rat moved away to the neighbor's garden. Is everything okay? Mrs. Moyo, our nose, nosy neighbor from across the road, had walked up to the gate to see what the commotion was about. She found me, Ma, Dad and me standing breathlessly by the garage door. Find your own document, Dad growled and stormed off. He held his vest down so on either side to hide his undershorts. Everything is just fine, Ma. Ma said shakily to Mrs. Moyo and then she picked up Dad's trousers and slippers from where she had left them and hurried into the house. Mrs. Moyer turned with a smile on her face and I was left on my own. It was then I remembered my homework. I took it, looked at my book and gasped. It was muddy and torn. Where is your book? Mr. North asked when I stood before the class the next day to read my assignment. I was writing my assignment in a book when a big grad. So now he he was, he talked. He talked about, um, he, he, he was planning to write the assignment. But what happened was that the rat came. And because of the rat, the book got torn and destroyed. Now, before Mr. North and the other girl, the, he was holding up a very dirty torn book. I was writing my assignment in a book when a big rat. Just read us what you have got. Mr. North rolled his eyes and said, slide away. So I read out my essay. I written it on a piece of paper with the title. E is for e -waste. I have written about recycling, reuse, reducing pollution, preserving our natural source and e-waste. When I finished, everyone clapped, including Tasha. Even Mr. North smiled an indication that I have proven him wrong by writing a very good essay about ways to save our environment. He was particularly impressed that I had written about e-waste, something he had not taught us about in the class. So now he was able to make an impression because he had written in a piece of paper about e-waste about the waste, control e-waste by recycling, reusing, reducing pollution, preserving our natural waste and e-waste. Okay, Sako has put uh, more effort into his essay by raising subjects you have not learned in the class, Mr. North said proudly. And just when I thought that I had proved that I was a dim bit, someone in the class, what does the E in the e-waste stand for? <laughs> The class went dead quiet as everyone waited for me to answer. I gulped as I had no idea. Then a voice came from the back. It was Tasha's voice. She said, the E in the waste is for electronics. So we have a very brilliant uh, essay, a short story here in which uh, we are talked about the thought about the e-waste. So different kinds of e-waste are dumped on the uh, floor of the garage because his father is aware that e-waste will create lots of harm. So he doesn't want the e-waste to come in contact with the air and the soil. So he is keeping it inside the garage. So what will happen to e-waste? When e-waste falls on the ground, it will undergo various reactions and that will lead to lots of air pollution, both of the sand, the air and water. So not just both air and, air and land, but also water. 
So that is that is very conscious about, but he cannot convince his wife. And so while they are arguing, a rat appears and rat disturbs, and it disturbs the writing process that uh, our his under, hero is doing. But later on, even he takes up uh, the book to be read. He reads it out and he talks about e waste and the different things. And he everybody praises him and Mr. North is very happy. Then suddenly uh, there's a question, what is e in the e waste? And he's not able to answer it. But the, somehow, luckily there was this girl who stood up and said, uh, the, the e, she said that e in is um, the waste of electronics. El, uh, electronics, so electronics waste. So when you, you think of electronic waste, you have to uh, think actually about things. So white goods, heavy consumer goods such as refrigerators and air conditioners, usually white in color. So key concepts here are, have to be studied. So what is white goods? So big products like fridge and air conditioners which are white. Recycling it involves the conversion of waste into useful materials. Recycling is the key to reducing e-waste. Then we have refurbishing, repairing, and this. So if we if you get a, if you find some fault with your mobile phone, you will immediately want to buy a new one. So don't do that, but repair and use it. Now uh, there are different rare earth metals, a set of 17 chemical elements, including uh, the lanthanides, scandium, the yttrium. When e-waste is not recycled, these metals need to be mined to make future products. So when you are throwing away old stuff, remember that you have to get the new things. So gradually we will be consuming our um, uh, what is called, uh, our uh, raw materials, which will not then serve the future generation. So we have to always think of the future generation also. So what is the Basel Convention? An agreement on the control of transboundary movement of hazardous waste designed to prevent the transfer of hazardous waste from developed to less developed countries. So the hazardous waste will be dumped. So e-waste dumping is a process that developed nations do. So they will collect all their used computers and will ship it to a poor country. So poor country will get computer and they are serving the poor people. So that is what is made to believe. But actually it is a kind of dumping or waste being dumped from one country to the other so that their country will be free. But gradually man has to understand one thing that man, or humanity is one, you cannot escape. So whatever you do, it will come back to you. So that, that is a message that we have to understand and learn. So this is this this is the um, uh, uh, eco space uh, that uh, e is for e waste. It's a very important piece of work which you can which you have to study and read and understand.